Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel and back again we get another legendary creature from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction and I've picked it on common today in Honest Rutstein. One black and green for a 3-2 human warlock. Um, but when the Honest One enters the battlefield we get to return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand and then creature spells we cast cost one less to cast. Okay then, this is uncommon. I mean, yes, probably very much focused for limited play, I get that entirely. Um, but the command of implications on this, I think, are going to be many. It's going to, I think it's going to turn up in any decks that have black and green, and I think you're going to start seeing Honest turn up quite a lot. Um, but I've gone down a slightly different route today, because I want to do something a bit fun, and I realised there's one creature type that I haven't really done anything much with black and green with, and that's kind of where the Honest deck is built around today. So, before I go any further, I'm seeing at 373 subscribers as I record this video. Please, if you can, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment, hit the like button, help me out with the algorithm rhythm um, I'm trying really hard to get to 500 by the end of 2024 so please you know, any help greatly appreciate it but here's the deck for today now I've done the sales pitch you can't see the creature types I'm talking about yet but we'll get there in a minute anyway honest obviously honest rusty general commander yep and then we've got some cheap creatures so we've got birds of paradise help with the ramp then we've got Cheville or bane of monsters purely because I wanted something early that maybe gave me a bit of a good blocker and Black green Cheville kind of fits that um, wanted thing for me with the wonderful world of Death Touch. Don't care about the rest of the text on the cards, just the whole Death Touch thing. So it's all good. The bounty counters, you may get some life occasionally, but you know, it's the Death Touch early doors blocker. Um, Gala Greeters give us some treasure token as we go through with our wonderful world of casting creatures. Um, occasionally we'll get some life and occasionally we'll get some plus one, plus one counts on the guard of greeters, but I'm more interested in the treasure to help with the ramp. Um, going from there, we've got Akawali, the Seething Tower. We're going to descend hopefully a lot in this deck. Um, as long as there are four more permanent cards in your graveyard, Akawali gets plus two, plus two, and has trample. And eight or more means it gets plus two, plus two, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So should be able to get this up to a seven, seven quite quickly for three mana. So yeah, you'll see why in a minute. Um, Eternal Witness, just to return some things from our graveyard. I'll get to why shortly. Um, Selaval, the Heart of the Wilds, might as well have a little bit more mana ramp if we can. And the focus of the deck is really appearing now from here on in. Um, as you can probably see, I decided to play Black Green Dragons with the Honest One today because I haven't done a deck like that forever, from what I remember. Um, yeah, some of the decks have had their own thing, like Belladross has obviously had their own deck done around them at some stage. But I decided it'd be a bit of fun to have this and you know, just cast a whole load of dragons if we can. So... The dragons we have in the deck, and obviously you can take these out if you don't want to do it this way, but I did it this way for a bit of fun. Um, we've got Boneyard Scourge, it's starting at the top here. Um, whenever a dragon you control dies, if it's in the graveyard, you can pay one and a black and return it to the battlefield. Ebon Death Dracolich obviously comes back in um, if you can. When you cast Ebon Lift Dome from the graveyard, if a creature not named Ebon Death died this turn. Okay. Timeless Witness gives another way of returning things that may have gone there by mistake. And then we've got Juni, the Midnight Sky, to return um, everyone, each opponent can discard to lose to. And then we can return one of our other non-dragon creatures from the graveyard onto the battlefield under the control from any graveyard. Sorry. Read the card right. That helps. Um, Kura, the Boundless Sky, just basically gives us lots of land cards, which is great. Oja Kaslam is in the deck, um, purely because I just like Oja. I'm not going to lie about it. And in this deck, it may help us get the dragons out a little bit quicker. Jurgen, the Rising Star, gives us plus one, plus one counters when he dies off. Um, Kukushko, well, we all know what Kukushko does and upsets people greatly. Steel Hellcat is making an appearance for the first time in a deck forever. Um, purely because I'm a bit worried about just take it. I want to take out non permanent um, with converted mana cost X or less. So, yeah, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. Topaz Dragon comes in from the Battle from Baldur's Gate. Just give our creatures Death Touch, then have a flying Death Touch in the air. Belladross with the Bloom, I've already shown you off. Um, the Pest Tokens keep us alive a little bit longer. Um, Brain Stealer Dragon is just complicated text to read out on a card like this, but it is good fun when you play against your opponent, trust me. I've played it against my opponents and they don't like it. 
Deathbringer Regent. Um, hopefully we'll cast it from our hand and have another way of ratting the deck board if we need to. Throw Razor Regent just lets us fight things. Old Norbone gives us treasures. Um, the Hordling Broodlord lets us go and do, let's shuffle our library, find a card and exile it face down, then play it as long as it remains exiled. And we can convoke those cards in, which is nice. And then Earthquake Dragon is just big and grumpy and is a dragon. That's it. There's nothing completely fancy about this at all. That's purely what it's doing. Obviously, if you don't like dragons, you can play other types of creature cards. And I just want to play something fun, so bear with me. The rest of the deck... The creature base you can play around with, but I think the rest of the deck is where you need to be. So, we've got 27 um, instant sorcery spells in the deck, starting with the Commune with Gods um, to get things into our graveyard, ready to return with the Honest One. And then we've got Farseek, Gaze Blessing in case we're getting milled. It's not too bad getting milled away, but there are times when you want to return some of the things from you that may have been milled to your hand. Yeah. Signets Ramp, they're coming up. Gather the pack, lets us do the top five cards, get a creature card, put the rest into our graveyard. Uh, all two, we've got five or more. Mulch, same idea, all land cards into our hand, everything else in the graveyard. Nature's Law, Rampant Growth, do the whole ramp for us. Return from Extinction lets us choose, return two target cards from a graveyard that share a creature type. This is a great way of getting your dragons back in your hand if you need to cast them, hard cast them. Roots of Wisdom, Mill 3, get a land card back. There's no, well, there's a couple of elves, not many, but so chances are you'll be getting a land back of anything at all. Sylvan Scrine, three visits, go and find your land. Agadim's Awakening, um, an extra land from the deck if we need it, or return from your graveyard to the battlefield each, any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost of X or less. If you can get X off for about 10, you're going to return everything that's in the graveyard. It's great. Cultivate, Kodoma's Reach. You all know what they do. And they go find our basics. Life and Death. Um, we can turn all our lands into 1-1 one, one creatures if we need to, to get that final thing in. Or we can return a creature card from our graveyard to the play, and we lose life equal to its converted mana cost. Expensive on something that costs 15. Not too bad on a 4-cost dragon. Retrieve gets us to return one target creature and up to one target non-creature permanent card from your graveyard to our hand, then we have to exile it. Search for tomorrow's land ramp. Wasteful harvest, go and mill, get a permanent back, and yeah, that's cool. Instant speed, quite nice. Damnation, control the board. And then we have a little bit of reanimation. So we have dread return. Um which we all know what does, and the flashback can be done, especially if you've got Beldross in play. Um, Sudden Reclamation lets us return, top, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a creature card and a land card from your graveyard to your hand. So, yep. Venture Forth is more land ramp. Vigor Mortis returns something from our graveyard with a plus one, plus one counter on it, because you will play black, green, and something else. Zombify, Zombify, had to have the old school one in. And Badlands Revival also comes in with Honors Rustine. Um, return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your battlefield, and return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. It can be another creature, just so we're clear on that, along with any of the um, artifacts, lands, so on and so forth that's gone there. Unbreakable Bond is just another Zombify that puts a life link counter on whatever we bring back. And I had a bit of fun, so I had one slot left, and I went with Genesis Storm. So I think we'll cast Honors Rustine a few times from our command zone so we might get a couple of good things off this at some stage ramp um mox tantalite soul talisman soul ring arcane signet one of each of the medallions talisman of resistance um elixir of immortality again here in case things are gone pear shape and we need to restart our graveyard into our library and the other card i'll point out because we are playing a dragon based deck i figured i could get away with herald's horn in the deck as well just to cut, cut the cut, cut the cost of the dragons down Couple of enchantments. Um, Growing Lights of Itlamok are here, just so we can do the whole gaze crate if we can get it flipped and it gives a way of searching through our library again. And Journey to Eternity. This is a lovely one if we can get it flipped into the Atasol cave. Um, we've got to get it on a creature. It's worth probably trying to do Honest Rustin and put this on top of Honest Rustin, I'll be honest, in your next turn. And then once Honest Rustin dies, you can bring him straight back. Um, you get another creature card from your graveyard back into your hand, and you get the cave, and then you can start paying out three black and green to do the return of the creature cards. The lands, just the black and green lands you would expect to see. Um, Field of the Dead, Fable Passage are here, along with my usual selection of things, including the Avramar and Urborg are here to help us out. And that's it. 
There is nothing fancy with Honest Rustine today. It's purely a reanimation deck, graveyard deck. It's what you see when black green manipulate your graveyard all the time. Yes, there are probably cards I missed out. Yes, people probably don't want to play the dragons, but it's going to be my fun deck that I'm going to play around with once Outlaws hits the set. Um, hits the set? Nope, hits the MTGO. It's just, I always like to have one funnish deck sitting in the background ready to go when I'm streaming. You, know, you can come and see me stream it downstairs. Come and give me a follow in the link description down below. Um, there is a link to my Twitch stream. Come give me a follow over there as well. But for now, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the shorter deck tech today. And I'll be back very soon with another one. Still, we may have a break from Outlaws. I'll see. I'm trying to think of something else to do with a couple of the decks at the moment. So we'll see what comes up tomorrow. And it'll be a surprise. Anyway, for now, take care. See you soon. Bye.